Thank you for joining us online today. Here at the House of the Lord, we love to hear what God is doing in your life. So if you have a testimony that you'd like to share with us, please email amen at hotl.church. If this house has impacted you anyway, and you'd like to partner with us financially, please visit our website, hotl.church, and click on the top right to give. Or you can text the dollar amount to 84321. Thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoy the message. Have a great day. I want to open up with a word of prayer. I want to welcome you first. And I want to, I want to just, um, I, I love our series, Peace on Earth, because I think the biggest thing that we need right now is, is peace. Amen. How many of you would just about give anything for a little bit of peace right now? Right. Okay. I'm, I'm going to minister on that. I believe the Lord's really dropped something in my spirit for us. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up with a word of prayer. So just bow, and if you're with us online, please just bow with me. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for your word, which comes and penetrates uh, any fear, any anxiety, uh, any uncertainty. I, I, I thank you so much that we can count on you time after time after time. And I, and I pray this weekend, Father God, not just for our, our gathering here and, and those that are with us, but I also pray for our communities that are represented. I pray for the, I pray for the, the health uh, care people that are, that are just, you know, they're uh, overwhelmed with, with just trying to take care of people. I, I pray for people that we know and love and people that we don't know that are struggling with this pandemic. I pray for, uh, for just wisdom for, for God, our, our, our officials, our government. Uh, Lord, this is, this is, New territory for just about everyone that I know of, and I pray the wisdom of heaven uh, is just dispensed to us in Jesus' name. I pray for this word. I pray that you open our, our ears and our hearts, and in the name of Jesus, we all pray, amen, amen. Okay, now listen, the uh, inherent desire of most people, if you ask them, would be peace. I mean, it's crazy, but in the world we find like organizations, just multiple organizations uh, like the World Peace Council and International Peace Bureau and Global Peace Foundation. And, and I mean, we can go on and on and on. There's countless songs, countless movies, countless uh, books that are written on peace. There must be something inherent in mankind that desires and values peace. Can I get an amen? amen. And, and, and so... When we look at that, though, we, we also, it's interesting that many people define peace simply as the absence of conflict. And that's just like part of it. It's a little part of it. But yet that's the big part of it for most people. If I could just live life without any conflict, and Pastor Dole did a, a great job last week of preaching that, hey, conflict actually matures you. You know, he, he did a great job of lying out the difference between a peacekeeper and a peacemaker. But it's interesting that many people define peace simply as the absence of conflict. And if you settle for that definition, if you settle for that, you are settling for so much less than what God has intended for you. See, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. And defined, it means a state of completeness, wholeness, well-being, uh, there's concepts packed into uh, shalom in that like wholeness, peace, security, tranquility, completeness, contentment, safety, and well-being. So merely to stop fighting or suspend strife is not shalom as the Jewish culture understood it, as the Bible understands it. It's far beyond just the absence of conflict. Sometimes it's used many times as a simple greeting or goodbye. And here's one of the things I learned is that you know, you'll, you'll find that, that Jewish pe people will, will greet. And it's okay if you're a non-Jewish person to greet somebody with shalom. But shalom is also one of the names of God. So you never want to actually shalom somebody like in the bathroom. That's considered poor taste. Right? But, but when we look at this, um, shalom speaks of not only a state of wholeness or well-being, but it speaks of an active process that's ongoing. And when your shalom breaks down, it needs repairing. It needs restoration. It's not just ceasing from conflict. And so for many, the definition needs to be expanded. Once again, there is within most people 
a desire for peace if you ask them to be honest. Now, some may, some may say their desires for money or other uh, material things, but when you dwell into that ask, it's usually because there's this illusion of peace found in things, right? If I could just get the right house, if I get the right job, if I could just get the right trophy wife, if I could just have the right amount of kids, right? And so we, we tend to really, um, we don't understand the fullness of what God has for us. And then when we lack peace, which once again is the lack of completeness, com, uh, completeness wholeness, we many times try to find it in recreation or shopping or recreational shopping, right? How many of you like need to have a little retail therapy Right? Okay, I get it. We get honest here, man. This is just a transparent group. But we can try to find peace in financial security. We can try to find peace in relationships or achievements. But we can also find that those things, although they bring some satisfaction, but overall can be really fleeting and doesn't sustain us. Jesus said this, the kingdom of God is neither eating nor drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness, right relationship, peace, shalom, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And there's a beautiful intersection that we find in Scripture. In Psalm 85.10, I love this. Loving kindness and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. There's a beautiful intersection of what we find is inherent in the kingdom of God. So we try to find peace because we were created for peace. There are some people that will say, well, I was created for war. Now listen, war so many times is inevitable, but you were actually created for peace. You actually operate best in an atmosphere of peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I mean, that's really what the Bible is saying. And it's how we're built. Every one of us has a different build. We don't have the same shape. My wife has a different shape than I do. Thank goodness. Right? And some, and, and you know, and you look at just like, you know, they say like, you know, like when you're doing your, your, your BMI, you know, your body mass index. And, they, and, and you know, and as you feel this thing out, it's kind of interesting. They go, they go, uh, they go um, you know, light build, medium build, or heavy build. In my mind, I want to go heavy build. But it's not. I'm like, I'm a medium build. Right? We're all design different but what we aren't designed to do is we're not designed to carry anxiety or stress our core design is to be at peace to walk in peace cultivate peace harvest peace and to bring peace see and you can't plant if you don't have any seed and you can't give it away if you haven't received it you can't give what you don't have right some people try to but the creator or inventor, think about this, of any tool has a specific purpose in mind. And if that tool is used in a manner that it was not created for, it's actually defined as abuse. So, I mean, you know, I can, I can grab a guitar up here, which is created for a certain purpose. But if I decide I'm going to pound nails with it, I'm actually abusing it. Right? Right? And so you and I were created to walk, to live, and to thrive in peace. That's why there's something in us that's always hungering and longing for peace. And there's abuse going on all over the world right now. We are victims of anxiety. We're victims of worry. We're victims of concern. And if we're created in, to live and operate the best in peace, for sure, then we've not seen the best of each other. Because we haven't seen each other walk in that peace that surpasses understanding. Okay, so if 2020 was a movie, instead of finding Nemo, I think it would be like finding peace. You know, how do you find peace, right? Uh, there's a U2 song called Peace on Earth. And some of the lyrics go like this. Jesus, can you take the time to throw a drowning man a line? Peace on Earth. Jesus, in the song you wrote, the words are sticking in my throat. Peace on earth, hear it every Christmas time, but hope and history won't rhyme. So what's it worth, this peace on earth? See, sin has broken peace, the wholeness, the completeness, 
that you and I were created for. And there's a war over your peace. There's a war over your well-being. There's a war over your state of mind. There's a war of how you carry yourself. Because if the enemy can keep you in that state of flux, you're not walking the way that you were created. And I think it's absolutely profound. Birth of Jesus, we see the declaration of peace. In the announcement, in Luke 2, we're going to go there, 11 through 14. It says, For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill towards men. Shalom. That was the word that was used. And the heavens opened up and the declaration and announcement was the culmination of prophecy and hope coming together. And listen, this is pretty awesome. God does press conferences in a big way. Have you ever thought about that? Just what that would have been to experience that? Heavens opening up, angels declaring. I mean, seriously, we think we know how to actually do a press conference. But God's press conference over the birth of Jesus declared peace. And fulfilled an earlier prophetic declaration that was given in a time of great darkness, stress, and tumult. tumult. So in Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And you know, this is a crazy thing because when we, we see the narrative of, of, of the baby Jesus and we see the wise men and the shepherds and people gathering around him and they're looking at this baby. When we look at a baby, I, I believe there's hope in us and we wonder, what's he going to be like? What's she going to be like? Is, is she, Is he going to look more like his dad or his mom? Is he going to get taller? Is he going to be short? What's he he going to accomplish? I mean, you know, you've got all kinds of dreams. Well, it's amazing because people were gathered around the Christ child. And already because there was a declaration from the prophet Isaiah... Already they were looking at a baby and they were seeing his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And I'm like, man, how would, you, how would you like to have a baby and have it just like be raised up under that expectation? So the series this Christmas is about peace on earth. <clears throat> and once again, most people would simply describe peace as the absence of conflict or war. But we know that our definition has to be much broader, has to be much deeper. See, shalom is not just the absence of conflict, but an active process that works towards rebuilding and restoring wholeness. For example, in the Old Testament, if your your cow broke through your fence and destroyed your neighbor's yard, you wouldn't just go get the cow. You would actually began the process of shalom, which would be to repair all of the damage. That was the expectation. Wasn't just the absence, hey, I got my cow back, we're all good, right? It'd be like, no, there's a process where you gotta shalom your neighbor, okay? Shalom would not be just stop fighting, but move forward and also rebuild that which had been destroyed in in, in a battle. So I wanna give you, uh, this weekend I wanna give a few takeaways that I think are important. Number one, peace is a gift. This kind of peace is a gift. It's a gift. It's not something that you can work up, that you can earn up, that you can, you know, it's, it's a gift. It says in John 14, 27, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. Peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. So when I read that, I'm, I, I start understanding the supernatural element that's required for the shalom, the peace to work in my life. It's not just kind of getting my ducks in a row and, you know, kind of figuring out all these little conflicts in my life. It's actually a heavenly resource that opens up 
and actually comes into my life. It's a gift. And I have that gift because Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Wow, that's cool. I can, I, I, okay, I'm, I'm excited. It's not something you get on your own. It's impossible without God. It's impossible without a relationship with God. It's restored in Christ. The second one is, I already said this, but you were created for peace. So you need to believe that it's possible. If you were created for it, believe that it's possible. Because as a, uh, if God created us to operate best in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, then have faith that it's possible no matter what your circumstances may be. As a man thinks in his heart, right? So he is. The third takeaway is we partner in this process of peace. It's just like, okay, I just received it. I'm going to walk in it. It's all good. We actually partner in this process. In Matthew 5, 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers. They will be called the sons of God. When you, when you break down that word, peace, shalom, makers. So, so peace, wholeness, completeness, fullness, security, makers. One who creates something. One who makes something. Blessed are those who actually partner in the process of this peace. It's active. It's producing. So let me ask you this. Are you actively creating shalom or are you breaking shalom? Are your words... Are you building bridges? See, and my next takeaway is we partner in the responsibility of peace. Psalm 34, 14 says, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So, wow, okay. I'm trying to open up my understanding of this, this biblical concept of peace and shalom. So, okay, if I depart from evil and do good, okay, that's good. That's part of my responsibility. I can't expect this peace from God and kind of continue to just do the same old stuff that I used to do, right? I mean, it, it should be, it's powerful enough, and grace is, is powerful enough to change my life. So it says, that, it says to depart from evil to do good, now seek peace and pursue it. I'm like, okay, come on, let's be honest. We know how to pursue things. Seriously. When I saw Robbie across the parking lot for the first time, the pursuit was on like Donkey Kong. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we know how to hunt stuff down. We know how to shop stuff up. We know, how to, we know how to research stuff. We know how to get stuff if we want it. Can I get an amen? Come on, y'all. Be honest. You're in, the, you're in the house. And so it says this. It says, pursue it. Seek it and pursue it. How do I pursue it? See, seeking peace is pursuing wholeness and completeness that come through God. See, now remember earlier where I said that peace is a gift, right? Peace is a gift. What do you do with a gift? You steward a gift, right? I mean, somebody gives you a gift, and guess what then? The responsibility is yours to steward it, right? Okay, how would it look like this? How many of you recognize that the Bible says children are a gift from God? So we know that that child of yours is a gift. And how many of you go, ah, that's cool. That's a really cool gift. Awesome. No, you got to steward it. It's actually, there's effort and there's things that you do. You don't just receive that gift and then go, cool, I got a good gift. I'm going to put that baby up on the shelf. <laughs> and maybe just God will grow it. No, God's going to use you to grow it up. He's going to use you to fashion it, to shape it, to form it, to train it. You know, <laughs> I mean, train up a child in the way he'll go. And when he's old, he won't depart from it. So there's a process. Even though children are a gift, there's a process. Peace is a gift. But then there's a process where we basically partner with that. And we have responsibility with that. Peace is the same. Right? Amen. Okay, how about, how about this one? This is a harder one. But obedience has a part in producing peace. It's a part of stewarding peace. 
And we live in a, man, we live in a culture we just don't like to obey. We don't. We don't. Who, who decided that should be 55 in here? You know, I can drive this at 65 all day long. I mean, that's how we are, right? I mean, we, do, we don't by our old nature inherently love to obey, right? How many of you young people, like when your parents says that, you need to obey me, I mean, just something just kind of shoots right through you. It's like an arrow of rebellion. At least you think about it, don't you? It's like, mm, okay. We don't like that. But listen to this. It says Proverbs 3, 1 through 2. My do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace, they will add to you. Sometimes we don't have peace because we don't walk in obedience. To what God, I mean, I, I don't know about you, but the times in my life, how many times have you not obeyed what God had asked you to do, and then you find no peace in your spirit? I mean, God, there's been so many times in my life, I need you to, uh, you, your Holy Spirit will say something about maybe, um, you know, humbling myself in my relationship with my wife, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that, and guess what, there's no peace. Or how many times God taps you on the shoulder to go talk to somebody or to give or to stop doing this. And you just like, oh, when you don't do it, there's no peace. Obedience is a partner with peace. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I could call the. Okay, how about this? We're to release peace. We're actually to release it. Think about this. I, I mean, I hadn't really thought of it in this context. I started praying and studying this out. But in Luke chapter 10, Jesus is actually releasing the disciples. He's, he's setting them up. And he says this in Luke 10, 5. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. Shalom. Declare wholeness. Declare security. Declare fullness. Declare integrity. Declare what's missing will be filled I mean, I'm like, wow, this is really kind of cool. I hadn't really thought about it in that way, but we're called to actually declare peace, release peace. Because that's what he did with the first disciples. So he's, think about this, he's sending disciples out to reach the world, basically commissioned them and instructed them to declare the same thing that God sent angels to earth at the birth of Jesus. Peace, shalom, to gift, to activate there's something about it that's voice activated. We're created in the image of a God who calls those things that aren't as though they were. And it's like he's saying, walk into that house and you say peace. In fact, he says, that's the first thing that you do. This is crazy. So if angels declaring it was supernatural, there's still something so heavenly resource that we have the opportunity to participate in on this earth. Crazy. Walk into that business. And you don't have, listen, you don't have to be like a weird Christian dude. You don't have to walk into the local thing and just like, peace, shalom. I mean, just go and praying. Going and praying. I mean, you can if you want to be crazy. But just go in and just recognize, okay, I have been called. Listen, we have been called. How many of you realize we set the atmosphere? We, we can. You can set the atmosphere. You carry the Spirit of God in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. You walk into a place where there's darkness, and guess what? Now there's light. You walk into a place where there's fear, and guess what? Now there's faith. You walk into a place where there's darkness. And you get to declare something that angels declared and Jesus told his disciples to declare. When he said, first say to this house, peace, shalom. Crazy. It's crazy. I love this stuff. Thank you for opening your word to us, God. There's also enemies of peace. I mean, there's some stuff you got to contend against to protect and steward the peace there's actions that we take part in that destroy wholeness. They destroy completeness. They destroy the very definition of what we basically would understand shalom to be. Pride can do that. 
Pride can absolutely destroy peace. How about this? Being judgmental can destroy peace. Have you ever thought about this? Have you noticed that we judge ourselves by our intentions and we judge others by their actions? I mean, <laughs> have you ever done something you realize, oh man, I really like, yeah, but my intentions were good. But when somebody else does something, we don't even look at their intentions. We look at their actions. And it's an enemy of peace. It's crazy. Man, I just love the Word of God. I just unpacks it. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 2 through 3, he says, With all humility and gentleness and patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Humility and gentleness with patience. Those are not things that we see our culture espouse. We don't. But yet we see that these are the absolute keys. And bearing with one another In love. How many of you realize the best thing about people is the people and the worst thing about people is people? Right? I mean, seriously. We don't get, I mean, every once in a while you get hurt hurt by an inanimate object. You're going to run into something or you're going to drop something on your foot. But most of the time, you're getting hurt by people, right? And so I, I think Paul's writing to the church here in Ephesus and he's saying, listen, He's saying, you get, there, 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 there's a recipe. How many of you got your favorite recipe? Man, I don't know what my wife did today, but she cooked up something that was, I mean, she, I, I'm, I'm kind of studying. I'm looking over my notes. And she goes and sits by the, <clears throat> by the fire. And uh, she's got these like two brown, you know, like a biscuit roll donut, something or other. And I'm, it caught my attention immediately. It's like, what y'all got there? You know, and she told me, and it was, it smelled so good, and she put like this, like sweet stuff on it, and whatever, and I'm like, and then she said, yeah, and it's actually really good for you. And I'm like, seriously? Were you going to make me one? And she came right over and gave it to me. That was awesome. And it was like the best thing I ate today. Seriously, it was so good. But there's a recipe right? Here's a recipe. Humility, gentleness, and patience. Man, patience. We want to spit it out like a cuss word. Patience. But it's a recipe. And then we bear with one another in love. Love. Man, a love overcomes a multitude of sin. So when we look at this, we understand there's so much, so important, this peace, this shalom. And life is best when you operate and function in how you were created. You know, I, 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 will, I said this a couple weeks ago. I, I didn't get the body of like a football player. I got the body of a basketball player. I function a lot better if I play basketball. You function, you and I function a lot better when we operate in how we're created. We're actually created for peace. But it's not something that you just, you partner with it, but it's a gift and you cherish it. And then you recognize this is the kind of peace that surpasses all understanding. You know, in Philippians, Paul writes this and he, he talks about lifting up your anxieties and, you know, your prayers and supplications. The peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your, and your mind in Jesus. Man, there's never been a better time to recognize that we need that peace that surpasses. We need that shalom that's inside. See, I, I'm reminded of the storm of the disciples when they were on a boat the waves had come up. And how many of you recognize there was actually two storms going on? There was one storm on the outside, one storm on the inside. Yeah. 
If, if, if you, a lot of times we can't, we can't do a whole lot about the storm on the outside, but we can do something about the storm that's on the inside. And when you have that peace on the inside, man, it will carry you through difficulties. Nobody said life was going to be easy. There's going to be, you know, James, man. Martin Luther didn't like the book of James. He called it the book of straw. He came around later and appreciated the book of James. But, he, but I mean, come on, you know, consider it all joy, my brothers, when you fall into various tribulations. I'm like, I don't like that word. I don't like that verse. I like to take it out of the Bible. But you can consider it all joy if you have the shalom peace that's on the inside that comes from a relationship with Jesus, that you cultivate it, you, 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 you cherish it, you recognize that this is the most important thing I can. But listen, you know, we're, we're in such a crazy thing. The, we found that the government doesn't have the answer. Science doesn't have the answer. Doctors don't have the answer, right? I mean, they're doing the best they can. I'm going to give them, the, I'm just going to keep praying in that, in that way. But what we need is we need that shalom peace that, that, that the angels, when heavens opened up, they declared in that press conference from heaven to earth. And we need that shalom in us. And it's been given to us. It's a gift by Jesus. Here's this incredible key. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish up right here. If I could have a musician help me. But Isaiah 26.3 it says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. I, mean, I, want, I want to read that again. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Now, I, I tell you what, think about how powerful this is. What is your mind fixed on? Is your mind fixed on CNN, Fox News? USA Today, I have to be so careful because I'm like a news junkie. I want to know what's going on all the time. And I realize, you know what? I've got to make sure that I'm not fixing my mind on the events of the world, but I'm fixing my mind on Him. I'm fixing my mind on the Word of God. I'm, I'm fixing, I'm focusing on the promises of God. I'm focusing on the faithfulness of God because His faithfulness in the past gives me hope for the future. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Right? And I mean, that's going to be the key to actually your mental, your peace, your well-being. Otherwise, you're just going to go crazy. Seriously. You're going to go bad. You know what? Crazy. Because you're not focusing on the right thing. And man, when I get in the Word and I see stuff like this, I'm like, you keep Him in perfect peace. I want perfect peace. I want shalom. I want completeness. I want, I want integrity. I want security. I want to know that, hey, you know what? You know, my wife loves storms. I don't really like storms. Because I'm always thinking, you know, what if that tree falls on the house? What if the power goes out? I'm going to be out there with a chainsaw. What if it does that? She loves storms. You know why? Because she feels secure. Fire's going. Get a cup of hot tea or whatever. And I mean, she gets a blanket and she just, you know why she feels secure? Because she's, she's safe. She's safe. That's what peace will do for you. There's a king that one time commissioned a couple artists to draw a picture of peace. So I want you to draw a picture of peace. And so one of the artists, he, one of the painters, he drew this just this beautiful mountains and this lake. I mean, it's just serene. Another artist basically drew a picture of a river you know just kind of winding down and I mean you just you just like man I could sit here forever and then the third artist he draws a storm he draws a waterfall that's just I mean it's wrecking it's just coming over it's a flooded river and if you look really close at the painting 
right inside of that waterfall, you see a nest and you see a bird and you see her, her little chicks and she's got, her, she's got her wings over them. And he said, that's what peace looks like right there. That's what peace looks like. And you know, we can have that peace. We can have that peace. God gifted it to us through Jesus. And yeah, we got to steward it. You know, we got to, we got to take care of it. We got to pursue it. We got to seek it. It's a gift. Take care of the gift. But it's a gift. And it's our, it's ours in Jesus. It's ours in Jesus. Jesus said this, these things I've spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you'll find tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. I have over don't fear the storm, because I've got you. Don't, 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 don't fear the darkness because I'm the light. And I'm like, that's what we need to walk in. That's the kind of peace. And it's available. It's so it's amazing. And we can also release it. You walk around with that shalom inside you, and guess what? You're gonna you're gonna encounter people that are just afraid, and they're gonna go, "What is different about you?" And you tell them about Jesus. They will feel it. It's a spiritual thing. It's a resource thing. It's a release thing. It's something we can do. There's times, just even in my relationship with Robbie, where you know things are challenging. I've been able to just kind of walk up to her and just say, it's going to be okay. Peace. Peace. Nothing on the outside has changed yet, but everything on the inside changes. And when the inside changes, guess what? The outside is not near as daunting. It's not near as fearful. Can I just say this? We're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. Come on, this is this is unprecedented times, but we have to re- Recognize, we got to fix our eyes on Him. And He's going to keep us in perfect peace. He's going to keep us in perfect peace whose mind is fixed on you. You keep Him in perfect peace, perfect shalom, whose mind is stayed on you. Pray with me. Jesus, I thank you for the gift of peace. I thank you that your word, uh, so many times, God, you would just speak peace. Showed up in a locked room where the disciples were huddled in fear because you'd been crucified and they hadn't even heard the reports yet of you being raised up and you walk right through the door and the first thing you say is peace. And you breathe on them. Wow. Would you just breathe peace into your people, in situations, into all the things that are troubling us right now. Just breathe peace into us, Lord. Help us to be releasers of peace. Help us not to be breakers of shalom, but just builders of it. In Jesus' name. If you're here this weekend and you don't have that peace that comes through a relationship with Jesus, I want to give you the opportunity. If you're here and you're saying, listen, I've heard about this God and I've heard about Jesus and I can feel the the love of God and the spirit of God, but I've never made the profession of faith to say, I believe and I become a follower today with with everybody, uh, every head bowed. I want to give you an opportunity to do that. And Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he died, he was raised up. You profess with your mouth, believe in your heart. We needed a savior because sin separated us. It broke the peace between God and man, but Jesus came to restore it. And if that's you, and you're saying today's the day, I wanna step into that relationship with Jesus as a follower. I want you to just kind of raise your hand and let me agree with you right now. If you're online with us, it, there's a there's a link you can you can touch you can you can uh, click on I think it's a connection card just indicate on today I, I give my life to this Jesus listen I, I I'm telling you I have a great hope in my heart I know it's a it's a tough season we're walking through right now 
But I believe in the Prince of Peace. And I believe that he's residing in those who believe in him. And he will carry us through in Jesus' name. And they all said, amen. Can we just put our hands together and give the Lord a praise?